Vancouver man who says that BC's bicycle helmet law could actually be costing lives took his fight to court today. He wants the helmet law thrown out, and so does a doctor testifying on his behalf. But health experts on Vancouver Island beg to differ, and so does one bicycle cop who says he may owe his life to his helmet. A news reporter Andrew Johnson joins us live with the story. Andrew. Hudson, the cyclist in Vancouver is arguing being forced to wear a helmet keeps many people from ever getting onto a bike. But there is no disputing if you take a spill and land on your coconut, you'll be better off wearing a lid. Constable Mike Messini is part of Vic PD's nine-member bike squad and he's training to ride this year's Tour de Rock. But he says he'd likely be lying in a hospital bed or dead if it wasn't for his helmet. I crashed on my mountain bike at work and suffered some severe injuries to my shoulder, foot and uh, destroyed my helmet by hitting a concrete step and I was off work for five months. Okay, so you're where you have to wear a helmet? Um, yes. Messini says he sees cyclists riding helmet free all the time and based on his discretion they'll get a warning or a $29 ticket. As for excuses, he's heard them all. Lady I just uh, spoke with said that she thought it was only on big city streets you had to wear your helmet. You know, I look really stupid. I, you know what, I'm not working. I always wear my helmet. This man traveling on two wheels in Nanaimo says he simply forgot just this once. I normally wear a helmet today. I got downtown and I realized I didn't have my helmet, so I'm going to be driving extra carefully on the way home. Strapping on one of these is more than just an inconvenience for one Vancouver man. He says BC's bike helmet law is violating his rights concerning life, liberty, and security. Ron Vander Erden says we should be encouraging more people to cycle instead of drive and forcing them to wear a helmet does the opposite. And that's not good for our health, it's not good for the environment, uh, and it's not generally good for the safety of cyclists because when there are more cyclists on the street, drivers behave differently. He's even got a doctor backing him up in court. For every brain that a helmet might save, by making it law, we might be actually losing another brain in, uh, in, as I say, in an injury that might not have occurred if we hadn't made it law. And we might be losing two hearts further down the road, people who are not riding because they've just, they were discouraged from this law. Vancouver Island's chief medical health officer couldn't disagree more. This is the 21st century. We've got an effective means of protecting the head. Use it. You've got a 70% chance of reducing severe head injury, brain injury, as well as facial injuries. Stanwick helped work on the original seatbelt laws three decades ago. He says people resisted those too, but in time came to accept the safety benefit, just as he hopes happens with helmets. Hudson Ron Vander Erden's day in court has come and gone, and he'll get another one. The judge in provincial traffic court in Vancouver hasn't made her decision yet, but says she won't be able to throw out the helmet law. It's not her jurisdiction. However, she says she may be able to throw out his $29 ticket. Vander Erden says it isn't about, he didn't expect the, the law to just be struck down immediately. It's about taking a stand and standing up for the rights of cyclists. Well, regardless of the law, I know a lot of cyclists who won't get on two wheels without one, so... Fair enough. They make a, it's an interesting argument, but uh, you can't really argue, like Dr. Stanwick said, the facts of uh, brain injury, and these prevent them. All right. Andrew, thank you. You're welcome. Andrew Johnson reporting.